Welcome to the Transparent FX Academy. I'm Nick, and I'm a top author and trading view with over 190K reputation points. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. This is the place to be for high quality, free trading education. Now, without further ado, let's jump straight onto the charts. In this video, I will be speaking about USD CHF. Now, as usual, to keep the video as educational as possible, first, I will be covering the technical aspect for this market. Then we will be moving to the order flow by looking at the commitment of traders, so the COT data, which is essentially what hedge funds and the big players in the market are doing and how they're moving their orders. And by the end of the video, by using the combination of these two different types of analysis, we will try to understand where we have the highest probabilities for the next next potential move here for this pair. Now, starting from the monthly time frame, what we can see is that we have a market which is currently testing a quite strong level of previous monthly support. In fact, from here, all this previous move to the upside was created, which not the market has broken into the downside, is turned resistance at this level. So what we could expect at this point is a retest of this previous monthly support and resistance, and then to see a rejection to the downside. Now, this would mean that essentially this market would need to create short-term bullish price action and then longer-term bearish continuation in order to complete this move. Dropping down on the weekly time frame, what do we see? Now, from a weekly perspective, we can see how clearly this market has been trending lower. We had, in fact, the creation of a series of impulses and corrections to the downside every single time creating new lower lows and at the same time also creating new lower highs, which is the definition of a downtrend. So at this point, we could expect a bit more short-term bullish price action, the creation of a lower high, and then to see a potential rejection to the downside. We can also notice how this area here is a quite strong zone of previous weekly support, now turn resistance. In fact, from here, all this previous rejection to the upside was created. Again, here the market tested its zone and got rejected to the upside. Now the market has broken below the level. So all this previous support is turned resistance because what we know is that in the market, previous support, once it gets broken to the downside, becomes resistance. So what we could expect at this point is a potential retest of this previous support and resistance and then to see a rejection to the downside away from the level. We can also notice that as we have an impulse and the start of a correction, if we want to measure the correction after the impulse, we have to take our Fibonacci from the high to the low of the impulse leg. And if we do that, we can see how we have the 50% and 0.618 Fibonacci retracements lining up exactly inside of this area. Now, this creates confluence of resistance because we have both this previous horizontal support now term resistance and also the 50% and 0.618 Fibonacci retracements all lining up in the same area of price, creating a confluence of resistance, which we could in fact expect this market to go and create a correction to before then getting rejected to the downside. So again, also from a weekly perspective, we could expect short-term bullish price action and then longer-term bearish continuation. Now, dropping down on the daily time frame, what do we see? Well, from a daily standpoint, the situation is quite clear. We can notice how in creating this move to the downside, there is one structure level which especially stands out, which is exactly this zone here. This area, in fact, was acting as previous support quite precisely. The market then broke below the level, started acting as resistance. In fact, it got tested here as resistance and immediately the market rejected it to the downside. Now, if the market will correct to this area, there is a good probability inside of here to see more institutional shorting of USDCHF, which at that point could definitely push this price lower, therefore creating exactly the move that we have previously identified by looking at the monthly and weekly timeframes. So a short-term rejection to the upside and then uh, a longer term bearish continuation. Now, if we go and see what we have when it comes to the commitment of traders, so essentially what hedge funds and the big players in the market are doing and how they're moving their orders, and we check the data precisely for the CHF, we can see how with the last reports, net positions have overall been increased. We went in fact from having minus 20.2K net positions 
all the way up to having minus 5.2k net positions. So we had a clear increase of the net positioning with institutions increasing their longs on the CHF. Now, this means that essentially USD CHF has been getting weaker because institutions longing the CHF make USD CHF weaker. So if the market will go and retrace to this area, at that point, there is definitely the possibility to see a potential rejection to the downside away from the zone because we have good probabilities of seeing more institutional shorting inside of this area. It is also important to point out that if from here the market will just continue higher, we would also have the creation of this overextended W formation. And after the creation of an overextended W, we would expect a potential rejection to the downside because after this pattern, usually the market creates a rejection to the downside for the completion of the pattern at the neckline, which is the previous resistance turn support from a daily standpoint in this case. So if the market will go and test this area, what I would expect in a situation like this? Well, as usual, trading is reactive and not predictive. The monthly, weekly and daily timeframes combined with the COT data, those are the best timeframes from a directional perspective. However, when it comes to confirmations and identifying early shifts in the trend of a market, the best time frames for that are the intraday time frames, so for our and lower. Therefore, what I would expect in a situation like this is that if the market inside of this area would shift from an intraday bullish market to an intraday bearish market at that point, I would expect a potential rejection to the downside for the market to create a lower high from a weekly perspective, as we have identified at the beginning of this analysis. Now, if you want to learn more, I really suggest that you go and check out the transparentfxtrading.com website, which you find linked both in description and in my bio. Here, you have the possibility to gain access to the most complete, all-inclusive mentorship program that you could think of. In fact, you have all my courses, so risk management, risk management and trading psychology course, the day trading course, swing trading course, the MQL4 programming course on automated trading. And you also have the possibility to gain access to all my software, so the COT data software, the trading station software. And if you continue to scroll down on the website, what you will see that you is that you have the possibility to join and gain automatically access with the email and password that you will create during the sign up process. So I really suggest that you go and check it out as soon as possible. The link is both in the description and in my bio, and I will see you in it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like. Also, let me know in the comments below any pairs or topics that you would like me to cover in the next videos, and I will see you in my next breakdown.